Hi everyone, John here at PT. Dan with Sandler. Dan with Sandler. <laughs> A little different, different uh, layout, I guess, today is yeah. what we should call it. We're going to try and start uh, showing you a little bit about Pittsburgh as we go here, not just our office space and those kinds of things. And today we're coming at you from Hotel Monaco at their beer garden, rooftop beer garden. Just a great layout here in Pittsburgh. And behind us, you can see the Alcoa building, uh, if you're familiar with Pittsburgh. So, but I guess on to uh, onto the sales side of things yeah, as absolutely. we go here. So first thing we want to talk about, we're going to talk about comparison and sales. And I think the first spot it comes out is really from the prospect, because prospects will frequently say, hey, mentally, even if it's not coming out, that they're comparing you to what they're doing now or what they've heard in other places. But then we also have the salespeople. We tend to compare ourselves to others too. So Dan, can you talk a little bit about the comparison side, both from the prospect element and from the salesperson, and some things that are healthy about that and some things to be cautious with that? Let's start with a question. John, who's the greatest football player in Jim Brown. Jim Brown? Yeah. Who's the greatest basketball player? Michael Jordan. Okay, so what position did Jim Brown play? Running back. Okay, would he be the greatest field goal kicker? Not likely. Is he the greatest safety? Nope. Center? Nope. All right, he's only great at his position, yeah. right? So one of the problems that happens with salespeople and people in general is we're comparing ourselves to other people, yeah. but they're not the same as us. Yeah, so I will guarantee you the world's greatest field goal kicker is not sitting there comparing himself to Tom Brady as a, as a great quarterback, of right? Yeah. So we have to remember that. And, and ultimately what we're looking for is to say this. No, no one's ever lived your life. No one has all the issues, problems, concerns that you're dealing with. No one has everything that has hit you ever. It's just you. So how do we and why do we? compare ourselves to others. Ultimately, what we should do is compare ourselves to ourselves. Mm -hmm. In other words, am I doing the absolute best I can? Can my sales numbers increase? Can my quality of sales call get better? You know, just what sure. can I do to improve? It's nice to look at what other people are doing, but ultimately, it's like a race against ourselves from the sales perspective. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and, you know, when you're looking at, am I better than I was, I guess you could say yesterday, but a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, am I getting better on that scale? But it's really hard to not look across and see that other salesperson go, well, they're ahead, they're behind, I gotta yeah. stay. So there's some naturalness, I think, to that that comes out and it's hard to break a little bit. Well, but. the difficulty too is if we compare ourselves to anybody else, we usually are on the short end of the stick. Sure, sure. There's always someone better looking, I know it's yep. hard to imagine, but there is people <laughs> better looking, they're smarter, they're quicker, they have a better family, they drive a better car, they yep. live in a better home, they have a better yeah. business we're always ending up on the short end of the stick. So be careful with careful what you do there. Yeah. Take it to that prospect yeah. side then for So me. from the prospect side, this is the this is really interesting to me. They will compare us only to the point that we find enough pain. <laughs> yes. Once you find enough pain, they don't then go out and start shopping you because they need to get that You're focused salt. on you now, not right. Yeah. If I wake up this morning and my tooth is excruciating pain, I'm not going around to eight different dentists saying, what can you do for yes. me, right? I'm going to the first one saying, can you help me? And if they can help me, it gets solved. Yeah, and I, we run into this a lot where we get thrown in a bucket with a lot of other groups that the impression of our prospects is they do what we do, we do what they do. And so we got to kind of work our way out of that box a little bit initially out of the gate. And to your point, finding that pain element because then they're focused on that reality and solving that problem if we bring it to the surface. If we don't, it's, yeah, you're just kind of like my incumbent or the incumbent who I work with now. Why would I make a change? I don't see the value. That's, you know, I hear that a lot. And then I look at what cars people drive. Yeah. And not everyone's driving a $3,000 you know, junk car. Uh, there, there is more to it. They'll say this, hey, you know, I'm just comparing you to everyone else, right? Bye -bye. Yes. But at the end of the day, people are willing to spend more money if you solve their problems. There we go. All right, everybody. See you again tomorrow. Take care.